All right, let's look at these problems here. So I'm looking at the quiz. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, five. Five questions. So a third of the quiz, maybe, half the quiz, um, is basically the exact same triangle, and they're asking for different parts of that triangle. I am not going to do the uh, the whole thing for you, uh, but I am going to find a ever so slightly different question and do that whole thing for you. So I've changed this from a 15 to a 17. Big change, I know, but I will do this question with 17, and I need you to be able to follow along and adjust the answers for 15, which is what the quiz questions were. Before we dig into this too much, I need to make sure that you have some background information. So I'm going to put that aside, and I'm going to pull out a different triangle. So I have an equilateral triangle here. Pretend that's an equilateral triangle. I labeled it 8, so it must be equilateral. And in an equilateral triangle, all the sides are the exact same. It happens that all the angles are exactly the same as well, 60, 60, 60. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this triangle in half. Again, pretend that's a straight line. When I do that, the new triangle that I have created looks something like this. This side here is still 8. So this side right there, that's 8. This is still 60 degrees. This is now 90 degrees because I cut it right here at a 90 degree angle. And since I cut this angle in half, this angle is now 30 degrees. So I have what we call a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Again, this side is still 8. If I cut this side in half, like I did right here, then this part, just the top part that I have over here, must be 4 because I cut the triangle in half. And that's kind of the first relationship that we need to have for these 30, 60, 90 triangles, is that on a 30, 60, 90 triangle, you're going to have a hypotenuse. You're going to have a short side, a short leg, and you're going to have a long leg. And the relationship between the hypotenuse and the short leg is that the hypotenuse is always twice as long as the short leg. So if you take the short leg, there's a reason I'm going over this, I promise. The short leg times 2, you're going to equal the hypotenuse. And we just saw that here. 4 times 2 is 8. That's always the case because we cut the equilateral triangle in half. Without doing the Pythagorean theorem, which you can do, you will find that the long leg of the right triangle will always work out to be whatever this short leg is times the square root of 3. And the square root of 3 is an ugly decimal, and if you times it by 4, it's still an ugly decimal. So we're just going to leave it as the square root of 3, and you're going to see that in the quiz and in the lessons too. So the relationship then is that if you take the short side and you put a square root of 3 next to it, times it by the square root of 3, it's going to equal the long leg. All right, so I'm going to refer back to this because this is kind of our cheat sheet. This is the relationship between all the different sides. And, uh, and that's what we're going to be focusing on with this problem, is not using a calculator, but how do the sides relate to each other. Back to the problem. Here we go. Um, I find this is a lot easier if I redraw the triangles. There are three triangles in this picture. There is the small triangle, X, Y, and A are the three sides of the small triangle. There's the medium triangle over here. So I'm going to redraw that. Right there. Uh, that's Y, B, and Z. And there's the big triangle. And I'm going to, yeah, no, I'm going to leave it just like it is. Okay. Close enough. Uh, X, Z. I'm not going to put A, B on the bottom because I know how long that side is. The bottom is 17. All right, here we go. 
in that original problem, I didn't draw it on the picture, and you probably didn't even notice it, um, but it said that this angle here is 30, and this angle here is 60, and that's a right angle there. So all of these are 30, 60, 90 triangles. I'm not going to draw them all in, um, because that would just add extra stuff to the picture that you don't need. But all these are 30, 60, 90 triangles. I only know about this side right now, so this is the triangle I'm going to focus on. This is the hypotenuse. X is the short side. Going back to my original notes here, the short side is always half of what the hypotenuse is. I know the hypotenuse is 17. X is going to have to be half of 17. Before you grab your calculator and do 17 divided by 2, they're going to leave it as a fraction, 17 over 2, which is the same thing, 17 divided by 2. They're going to leave it as that fraction, though. All right. We also had a relationship that said if we know the short side, we can find the long leg by multiplying it by the square root of 3. I know the short leg. I can find the long leg. Z is going to have to be 17 over 2 times the square root of 3, because that's what the relationship is. That's, that's what Pythagoras tells us. So just by using those relationships, that the short leg is half of the hypotenuse, and the long leg is taking whatever the short leg is times the square root of 3, I've already got three answers. And in fact, I'm going to go fill that in over here. X is the same as 17 over 2, because we already found that. And Z is 17 over 2 root 3, making some progress. Let's look at the little triangle. I now know the hypotenuse of the little triangle. Remember, x was the short leg in this big triangle, but now we're on a brand new triangle, and x is the hypotenuse because it's across from that right angle here. So x is the hypotenuse of this triangle. It's also the longest side, which means that a must be the short leg. The short leg is half of the long leg. And in case you forgot, if you want to take half of something, 17 halves times a half, half of 17 halves. If you multiply fractions, 17 times 1 is 17, 2 times 2 is 4, half of a half is a fourth. So half of 17 halves, 17 fourths. I know I'm going through this quickly, but I also don't want to make this a 30-minute video. All right, keeping going here, we have the short leg. If we have the short leg, we can find the long leg. We just take whatever the short leg is times the square root of 3. We have the long leg. Short leg is 17 fourths. The long leg is going to be 17 fourths root 3. Oof, I can't really see that very well. Let me try that again. So y is for both of these because it's the same leg. 17 over 4 root 3. All right, we are really close to being done. We could, all we're missing is this one here, as the long leg. Uh, we could take the short leg times root 3 to get the long leg, because y is the short leg on this right triangle here. And we could do that, and that would be fine. You can do it that way. Uh, there is another way. We know that this whole side is 17, because it was told we were given that information. We now know what A is. A is 17 fourths. I can find what's missing then, B. B is the last little bit. A plus B together has to be 17. So if I take 17 and I subtract 17 fourths, I'm going to get my, my answer, B, because together A and B have to make 17. And we know A is 17 fourths. You don't have to work with the fraction. But your alternative is to multiply root 3 times root 3 and then still get a fraction. So either way is fine, but you get to choose. Okay, I'm going to subtract this. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually change this to a decimal. I don't know how you feel about fractions, but uh, 4 goes into 17 4 times. 4 times 4 is 16. And there'll be one remainder. 4 times 4, 16 plus 1 more would be 17. Okay, so we got 4 and 1 fourth, 17 minus that, 
Um, you could keep working with fractions. In fact, I like fractions. But let's let's go to a decimal. I'm banking on the fact that you're like lots of other students that prefer decimals because calculators like decimals. 17 minus 4.25. Let's get out the handy dandy calculator. And again, I like fractions, so I would actually probably do this with a fraction, but we'll do it this way anyways. 12.75. Of course, the uh, computer isn't going to want a decimal, obviously, where so three quarters is 75 cents, 12 and three quarters. You could have done this way back here, but you know, we'll keep going. To change a mixed number back into an improper fraction like this, where the top is bigger than the bottom, we do 4 times 12 is tw uh, 48, 4 times 12 is 48, plus three more. 51 fourths. A lot of work. Now, this wasn't one problem. Remember, this was like five questions. And so each of these pieces is a different problem on the quiz. So what I need you to be able to do is model this problem or use this model to answer the questions here, except instead of 17, like my problem, it's 15. Okay. Ask for help on this. Ask again if you're not clear. Otherwise, I'm going to open these up, watch these videos, do those practice problems, and you should be ready for the quiz.